So it's my pleasure to introduce you to Georgina Somerville, who's the founder and director of Greengrouse CIC. Georgina will talk about the development of the Lancaster Sustainability Hub and the Green Roses partnership with other community organisations to turn a disused uh, shopping centre unit into community resource. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that introduction. And thank you, everybody, for making the time to be here today. To be here it's today. really it's nice to see you really all. Nice. I'm just going to first start off with just who we are at Green Rose and a little bit about what we do. And I'm going to apologise in advance because there are a lot of photos of me in this presentation somewhat randomly. I'm not someone who likes having my photo taken. And I think probably about 10% of all the photos that exist of me in the world are in this presentation. So I apologise in advance for that. So we're Green Rose and we are able i'm trying to get this to move but it doesn't want to there we go we're green rose and we're a social enterprise we're based in north lancashire and we offer households free advice and support on energy issues our aims are to help people stay warm and well and also to make their homes more sustainable and we do this through a mixture of advice support and education So this is just a few of the awards we've won just to have a moment of ego. And as you see, this is the some, some more photos of me. And these are some of the organisations that we work with. I'm not going to go through them all, but some of these are going to become relevant later as we talk about how we kind of thought, thought of the hub and how we've managed to move it forward. So at Green Rose, we sort of offer a few different strings, a few different aspects to the services that we help people with. Our bread and butter work is that we are the delivery partner for LEAP, which is a national service and it's the local energy advice partnership. And through that, we're able to offer free home visits to people in or at risk of fuel poverty. And the home visits include things like looking around their homes, um, giving them free energy saving measures like uh, draft proofing strips, um, underdoor draft excluders, LED light bulbs, uh, panels to go behind their radiators, etc. Um, it also includes giving them tips and advice on how to save energy in the home. Our home energy advisors will go in, make sure people's boilers are set up the right way, help them to set up their thermostats. Um, it, all the good stuff, basically. Um, we can also help people by referring them on to schemes where they can get access to grants for making energy saving home improvements. And we also have a scheme where we can refer people on for replacement white goods. So we're very much kind of in the heart of the community trying to help people in or at risk of fuel poverty. And obviously that brings us sort of into the path of vulnerable adults um, and people who might be struggling financially. As well as that, we also offer a training course called Energy Champions. And we actually, um, I wrote this course, I got some funding from Electricity Northwest to write this course when we were in lockdown. Basically, we weren't able to go anywhere. We weren't able to do our normal home visits. So I wrote a course that I could give online and that's where the Energy Champions started. It gives practical advice on staying warm at home, reducing energy bills, and helping people sort of build their skills and knowledge so that they feel confident saving energy at home um, and also knowing where to go to get help. So we cover energy use in the home, energy saving habits. We cover understanding bills, especially at this time, um, now that um, the price cap is changing every three months instead of every six months. It's important people understand what those changes are, why they you know, why they've come about, why energy bills have been going up and down so wild, wildly recently. We cover energy saving home improvements, both large and small, everything from an LED light bulb to cavity wall insulation, heat pumps, etc. And then we give a guide to grants and help available to homeowners and residents. We also have a retrofit service which we're developing and this is helping people to assess their homes and think um, and give them advice on what they need to target um, in, if they've got some money to spend or if they think they're eligible for grants, how we can get those energy 
saving home improvements into their homes, things like wall insulation, loft insulation, uh, new heating systems, etc. So those are sort of the things we offer. And then obviously the hub, which we opened in September, is a kind is a new innovation for us. And it gives us a physical space to meet people and be able to talk about some of those things with them. So what does the hub actually provide? Well, it's a welcoming space to get help. It's a place to be referred or signposted to relevant agencies. And, you know, I showed you that slide where we've got all the kind of local agencies that we work with. It's a convenient city centre drop in. It means that people can be out and about shopping in town and just pop in. We do have several kind of regulars at the hub. They're people who um, want to be out of the house during the day for whatever reason, but they don't work. Um, and they normally do a little trip to the library and then a little trip to us and they have a cup of tea and a sit down and they maybe take some energy saving uh, small measures home with them, which we give out for free in the hub um, and take some literature with them, etc. It's a space for education through our workshops. We offer um, ad hoc workshops and then we also offer a, a regular Monday lunchtime um, rolling programme of workshops so people can just pop in on their lunch hour and just have a quick one hour workshop every Monday. And we have literature, we have displays, and I'll talk a little bit more about sort of what our displays are and where we got them from. It's a training space for volunteers and it's also a meeting place for community partners trying to work towards solutions that reduce carbon emissions. So we have various uh, local organisations that work in sustainability who use the hub for their events, uh, use the hub for their meetings, etc. So how it started. This is actually uh, the artist impression when I was getting the um, signage put up. This is from the sign writer. So the sign you see is actually his artist's impression. What it was there was just this disused empty unit. So we started with this kind of disused unit that's been, it, it used to be a, a shop that sold cookies about 10 years ago. Um, the, the shopping centre actually had a sort of passage that ran next to the shop. Once it closed that passage, that shop didn't get much passing trade anymore. And it's not been fully occupied with a full time tenant for the past 10 years. Now it looks more like this. Um, we're in situ. We've got our displays. We've got our corner for people to come and get a device or just to sit and hang out. Um, we've got various um displays of things people can have in their homes we've got a display around composting and growing your own food and we're unfortunately not very warm the hub doesn't have central heating so we do have to use heaters but we are welcoming what we make up what, what we lack in warmth we make up in being welcoming so how did the hub come about so I've told you a little bit about what Green Rose does. We hadn't really had any plans for a physical space or an office space. All our home energy advisors work um, either out and about visiting or they work on the phone at home doing phone calls. Um, and our admin stuff, we really just worked from home. We started in 2020, so we're very used to working from home. We're very used to being the kind of Zoom generation. So we hadn't thought about having a premises. In the summer of 2022, I went on, I did a little bit of continuous professional development and I went on a course. It was a understanding domestic retrofit course, City and Gills course, and it was taught by Rick Franklin. He was the course tutor and he's the MD and founder of Google and Fabric, which is a company that offers retrofit, you know, courses on home retrofit. Um, and in the course of that study, he was saying he's an architect by trade and he was saying how he had been trying to start a sustainability hub in Manchester. And his um, his interest is more to do with the fabric of the home. Obviously, his company is called Cab Fabric and he wanted to have kind of displays of energy saving architecture, energy saving materials um, that you could have and people could kind of come in and look at them. And he said he'd been having a lot of trouble sort of trying to get something organised, um, trying to find a space, trying to find a unit. And my brain started ticking and I thought, oh, wouldn't it be great if we could have something like that here? I bet I could get something going. Um, 
with slightly more of a kind of fuel poverty and a, a household basis rather than the architectural basis. So I went on this course on Monday and Tuesday and I was thinking over this issue in the week. And on Tuesday, I'm years ago, I accepted to be the chair on Lancaster City Council's Green Skills Group. It's part of their housing action. They have a sort of housing action group and they have various subcommittees. And some years ago, somebody had approached me and asked me if I would chair one of the subcommittee groups. And at the time I had thought, oh, I'm not sure I want to do that. I don't know if I've got time. Am I the right person? Um, but I accepted because I thought, well, it'll sort of put me in the way of meeting interesting people and it might be a good kind of networking opportunity. And I'm so glad I did it because it really was. So I went to that meeting. I'd, I'd been on the training on Monday. I went to the meeting on Tuesday and I said in any other business, I said, oh, by the way, I'm thinking about I've had this great idea for a sustainability hub in the centre of town. And two of the members of that group, one was the sustainability lead from Lancaster and Morecambe College. And she said, oh, actually, we've been planning something similar. Perhaps we could work on it together. And then another member of that group was the chair of Harmony with Nature, which is a local sustainability charity. And he said um, he wasn't actually there at that meeting, but he called me up on Friday and said, oh, um, I've got we've got a little bit of extra funding this month, uh, you know, at the end of our kind of funding year. Do you have any ideas for a sustainability project? And I said, well, it's funny you should mention that because actually I've been thinking about the sustainability hub idea. So everything kind of came together in the space of a week and we started to think seriously about what we could do. The funding that they had available was fairly limited um, and the college as well didn't want to commit to a long-term project. So we thought about could we just do a pop-up? Could we just do something temporary? And that's what we did. <clears throat> so we ended up having a six-week pop-up project um, in the centre of Morecambe and this is our this is our poster that was outside our Morecambe shop. You can see us in there. Uh, that's me. Sorry, another photo of me. That's me giving advice to someone um, within the within the pop up shop. We were in the Arndale Centre for four weeks, and then we moved over to the Market Gate Shopping Centre, which is in the centre of Lancaster. And we were there for another three weeks. And during the course of that project. Um, we realised, you know, we, it, it was so great to have that city centre provision to be able to target people who were maybe digitally deprived, people who can't sort of hang on the phone for a long time or go through, oh, for this option, press one, press two, etc. It was so lovely for those people to be able to see a, a trained um, staff member or volunteer and actually physically talk to somebody with their concerns. People would bring in their bills and say, please, can you just look at this for me? I don't understand it or bring in their letters. It was around about the time when we were getting those large increases in the um, in the price cap. People were being written to to say that their direct debits were going to go up massively, etc. So people were bringing in their letters to say, I don't understand this. I don't understand what's happening. Uh, let's talk about it. And of course, while they were there, we could then talk to them about energy saving measures. Have you considered, you know, a heat pump, et cetera, et cetera. So we had in there, these things were provided by Lancaster and Morecambe College. We had the heat pump there. We had the, um, so the demonstration solar um, water system. And that's just a little quote from Maggie, who was the sustainability project lead from Lancaster and Morecambe College. And whilst we were doing the project, uh, the pop-up project, they were very active in helping us. I'm so sorry, another photo of me. Um, I like this photo because it shows the sort of range of measures you can have around your home. So I'm standing behind a heat pump, which is obviously a very large and expensive piece of kit that, in, that requires a kind of substantial installation. And what I'm holding in my hand is not, uh, I, I think I look a bit like Mary Poppins with her umbrella. It's not Mary Poppins umbrella, it is in fact a chimney balloon. You inflate it, and you put it into your chimney to stop drafts coming down the chimney and it can uh, save you about £30 on your heating bills a year um, by just stopping those cold drafts coming down the chimney. So I like that photo because it kind of shows the different 
the, the range of things that we were talking to people about. Not everybody can go home and install a heat pump system, but if you have a chimney, probably everybody can go home and pop that balloon up their chimney. So at the pop-up, we worked with over 200 households in that six week period. We connected with local organizations. That was a nice thing as well. People on their lunch break or whatever just came in and said, oh, what's this about? I work with Age Concern. I work with Galway's charity for people with sight impairment. You know, what's this? Could you come and talk to us? Could we send our members here? Um, we had the job centre staff from the job centre come in. Uh, we were able to show large and small measures, as you can, as illustrated by me holding the chimney balloon. Um, we highlighted energy saving behaviours and we provided an accessible point of contact for the digitally excluded. So after the pop up, um, you know, I really felt like it was something that I wanted to continue, but I didn't really know how. And then we had a little bit of a stroke of luck, which was that as we were leaving the venue that we're in now, the landlord, well, the, the shopping centre management approached us and said, how would we feel about keeping on the space indefinitely if we took charge of the business rates? Um, and as we are a not-for-profit organisation, we were able to get that rates relief. So we initially, uh, even though I really wanted to do it, I thought, oh, I'm going to have to, you know, get all the, because a lot of the equipment and displays had come from the college. So I thought well, I'm going to have to get everything again. All the furniture had come from the college. So I thought well, I'm going to have to source all the furniture again. And I'm going to have to source a really large amount of funding and also think about how I'm going to staff the hub. Because for six weeks, it was all right, I could just be there. But longer term, obviously, I couldn't commit to myself being there every day. And our other members of staff at the time, they were out doing their visits. Um, we have a community outreach worker who was kind of out doing drop ins and going to community groups, etc. We didn't have somebody who could just kind of sit in the hub indefinitely and wait. So these were all the sort of challenges that I had to think of. So my first thing was to reach out to partners and during the time of the hub, obviously I'd been trying to publicise the hub as much as I could, and I'd been writing press releases. Somebody had asked me to write a column for um, one of the local papers, and I'd also written a column for a magazine called Thrive, which is a monthly magazine produced by Food Futures, which is a local organisation that works uh, with sustainable food. And after I'd, uh, they'd approached me to write in their magazine, I thought these would, people would be a great partner. So I approached them and said, well, if I could get the hub together, would you like to partner with me so we could staff it together? And they agreed. They also run their citizen journalists meetings from there and they actually use it now um, for some of their um, sort of office events um, and meetings as well. So that was a way of me to, to sort of cut that sort of staffing burden and get people involved. Um, I'm also, uh, it, it hasn't started yet, but we also have a local um, bank who give their staff days off to volunteer. And we're also working on a scheme where we'll use them at some point, we'll train them and use them to volunteer to be, to, to staff the hub. So obviously I had to give back all the displays um, because they belonged to Lancaster and Morecambe College. So I had to think about sourcing my own displays. Um, so I approached um, various organisations and some of these uh, came to help. So Off Grid Northwest gave us a display solar panel and Charge My Street gave us a display EV charging. Relic Plastic are a local company who um, that just produced their annual report and last year I think they recycled two tonnes of plastic. Um, they collect the local plastic and they make it into furniture, um, and utensils and other sort of useful things. Um, and then Let's Be Friends are a local organisation who work with people who've just uh, moved into settled homes after being homeless. Um, and they also meet regularly in the hub and uh, sort of uh, are training some of their volunteers to be our volunteers and then more renewables is a local organization that actually they gave you've been Anne Chapman from more renewals gave one of these webinars a couple of weeks ago um I think in she, she gave the October or November webinar um they work with solar panels they're uh, they're also an off-profit 
not-for-profit organization and they put panels on organization on uh, large roofs basically locally and run a, a not-for-profit scheme with that so they gave us some funding as well to uh, pay for the hub so we had some funding from them we had some funding still a bit of funding from harmony with nature and we had our partnerships going so we'd been given some displays um we knew people were going to come in because we were working hard with our partners who work with the kind of service users that we want to target both in terms of the vulnerable people people who might be in or at risk of fuel poverty who we want them to come in and get help from us and also local people in the area who are interested in sustainability want to know more about growing sustainable food want to know more about making their homes greener and want to come in and get some free um uh, you know, uh, free small measures, some free draft proofing, etc. Um, and we also work closely with the council. And in fact, the council have been using us, for example, during retrofit week, the council used the hub to run their retrofit event. Uh, they've used it to run training sessions. The, um, the team that hold the housing support fund have been using us to run training sessions for the people who've received grants from the housing support fund in terms of saving energy and um you know uh, staying warm and well at home so the only thing really that was missing was a bit more funding and uh, i'm afraid there was no kind of alchemy to this i just started hitting the organizations that i know will give me information about what grants are out there so these are i just picked all these logos because these are all the newsletters that i get and i just kind of went through all my newsletters looking for funding opportunities and then just applied to a whole bunch of funds it, it you know it, it, nothing more sophisticated or technical than that i just did all the environmental scanning I could and looked for any fund that I thought would um, you know be interested in funding this type of project. So we did get a, a comparatively large uh, grant from Centrica. We applied to their um, energy energy for tomorrow grant um, which gives grants to organizations who either have kind of innovations in terms of saving energy or can help with behavior change so our uh, our angle was we're drawing people into the hub and then advising them on energy saving behavior changes basically uh, with the central group so with the centrica grant it meant that we could open for more days so reach more residents uh, daily opening meant we were even more accessible to the digitally deprived and people struggling with appointments. You kind of start saying, well, we, you know, we're open every other Tuesday, uh, but, you know, not on a leap year, etc. It becomes more difficult for people whose lives might be chaotic, um, who might be struggling with, you know, keeping time and keeping to calendars. So we're there every weekday and people can just pop in to see us. We've got more time for events, workshops and volunteer training. and it does help with the future of the hub for the next two years. So we do have that two year funding now. So we did open, yay. Uh, we had our opening on the 15th of September and the local MP did come to cut our ribbon. If you've got good eyesight, you can probably see her in that left hand corner. Um, we did have a really lovely opening session. We had 80 people come in the end, which uh, is a testament to the fact that we really do work closely with our partners and we really do try to stay um, as part of the community and as part of the community resources. So one of our priorities with the hub is trying to reach those hard to reach groups to give them that information and education which can be hard to get. If you read your energy bills, for example, they can be very um, it's just hard to read um deliberately in my opinion um it's hard for people to really understand what's going on and we try to break it down in a way that's very accessible and uh, easy to understand and try to give people an idea about those helpful habits um you know people can be wasting a lot of energy without even realizing um we've had people come in who have got their 
um, their boiler turned up to 80 degrees or whatever. And just simple things like that can really, you know, turning down your boiler, for example, can just save a lot of energy. So these are the, the small things that we try to make saving energy more useful to people. We try to make it relevant to their lives and part of them having a more comfortable life rather than just the, you know, the sustainability angle on its own. We have strong links with partners working with vulnerable service users and we have the trust of people we've already helped. Um, we refer people into our LEAP service, which is that service of home visits for people in or at risk of fuel poverty. And we find that the direct help that we can offer attracts service users who may not have considered carbon reduction. So this is some of the hijinks we get up to at the hub. Um, this was the council. In the middle is the council's retrofit day where we had uh, Cozy Homes in Lancashire, who are the local service who offer uh, access to those government grants. They came and did a presentation and talked to people. I'm afraid for some reason on the slide it's gone backwards. We had a sustainable Christmas decoration making workshop. On the right there, you can see the relic plastic sorting parties that we hold once a month. Um, and then just you can see as well those donations of the displays that we have, the EV chargers and the uh, solar panels there for people to look at. And it's just, I think, helpful that people can kind of see and touch things, look at things, ask questions, rather than everything having to be through a website or having to ring a phone line and press one for this, press two for this, etc. Um, you know, we do work with a lot of people who are digitally deprived. This is a little thank you note that uh, I got the other day from uh, a case that I just wanted to talk to you about. It, an elderly couple came in. They both struggle with their hearing, so they can't make phone calls. Um, they're not online, so they can't do things online. The what brought them into the hub, they'd been referred to us from Citizens Advice, is that they had bills from British Gas that they didn't understand. Um, they hadn't been getting paper bills. They, they'd somewhere they'd been getting an online bill, probably somewhere that they couldn't access. So we were able to ring British Gas on their behalf, uh, get them sorted out, get them a paper bill that they could actually pay. So when they got that paper bill, they came back in to tell us and brought us this thank you card. At the same time, we were also able to give them some energy saving measures. So they went home with LED light bulbs. They went home with draft excluders. They went home with chimney balloons, all those things to save a bit of energy at home, but also make their lives a bit easier. And we also referred them whilst we had them there to social services to come in and put some grab rails um, and help them with some aids and adaptations in their home. So really, when you come into the hub, it's, a you know, we try and look at the whole person, the whole household, um, and we try and, and address any kind of issues around fuel poverty and also those sustainability issues in a way that's very person friendly and very holistic to the household. So this is my last slide and then I think after that we'll do questions. So just some things that helped me with this project. As I said, it, it all came on a little bit unexpectedly. It wasn't something that was in our kind of five year plan. But the continue, my, my kind of commitment to my continuing professional development meant that I met somebody who gave me a good idea and something that I could run with. Joining with partnership organisations and taking new roles. If I hadn't uh, some years ago now agreed to take on the, the chairship of that group, I wouldn't have been able to meet such a wide variety of partners um, and work with them. Working contacts and networks, I, you know, we, we've only been able to bring the hub to fruition because we have such good networks in the community and we know so many uh, organisations who want to work with us and individuals who want to work with us. Grasping those opportunities for publicity, it just means people find you and ask you to do things. And then scanning the environment, that's how really we get our funding, that's how we get access to new opportunities, is to just be constantly scanning the environment and see what is out there. So thank you everybody very much for listening and I'm sure you probably have some questions. Thank you for the uh, interesting uh, talk. So is there any questions you would like to ask? Jamie, yes, please. Uh, thank you. Um, I've, well, I've actually got two. Can I ask them together or do you want me to ask one and then give someone else a turn? 
No, please, think, please go ahead. <laughs> okay, right, thank you very much. Um, the first question is um, just on funding. So my understanding of um, how you said you set this up, can I just confirm with you? So it, it sounds like um, a kind of a meanwhile lease. So in other words, the, the landlord has said, look, you can have it for as, as, as long as I'll let you have it. Yeah. Uh, you, you don't pay any rent. But you do pay the business rates, but I suspect you've got a dispensation for business rates from yeah. Lancaster. So that's how it works, then, right? Yes. Okay. So you so your outgoings for being in the property are, are just like the monthly overheads of heating, lighting, and so on. Then. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And we did. I should have said we did find the property through Lancaster Bid. So we have the business oh. improvement district right. um, in Lancaster, and we have one in Morecambe as well. So I just worked my contacts at the Lancaster and Morecambe Bid, and they helped us to find empty units. Right. Thank you very much. That's really helpful. Um, my second question is really about the order in which you did things. Um, and that will kind of maybe inform the way that we go about it um, here in, in York. Um, so there's a group of us trying to set up actually a sustainability hub, but we've called it a climate hub for now, which is where we started. Um, but I'm also director of York Community Energy, which is also the lead lead partner in York and does things very similar to um, what you do. Um, and it's um, it's all great fun, but quite challenging. Um, so. In, in terms of setting up a, a kick for the hub and getting the rates and getting the funding um, and also kind of getting partners on board and forming the board, is there like a particular project management order that you would recommend doing things given your experience? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, big question. <laughs> you flatter me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, really, I mean, we just we just did it. We we haven't formed a specific organisation just to be Lancaster Sustainability Hub. We do run it as Green Rose. So we're already set up as a CIC and then we run it from there. And then we just have partnering um, with, you know, with the organisations like Food Futures who work with us. Um, so we haven't found it necessary as yet to have a kind of specific Lancaster Sustainability Hub CIC or charity on its own, but that might be something that happens in, you know, in future, uh, depending on how well established it becomes as its own entity. Right, thank you very much. And in terms of kind of how, how to start, I guess, um, you know, we for me, obviously, it was the idea first, then getting the partners together, then finding the venue, then getting more partners together. Yeah. Right. I've scribbled that down. Brilliant. That's really helpful. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for uh, for your question. Now, next is Debbie. Hello, Georgina. That was really, really good. Uh, interesting, and I enjoyed it. Just a few thoughts that have flitted through my mind, and you're probably doing this already, so forgive me if you are. Um, do local supermarkets like Lidl, Aldi, Morrison's, Asda, do they provide you with space on the notice board to advertise the Green Rose and the Sustainability Hub? Um, do they encourage people in the food banks to donate energy saving bulbs, for example, and that that kind of thing. Ah, no. So um, so to your first question, yes, we do have some relationships with local supermarkets. Yeah. Um, uh, they don't let us because we're not a charity. They don't let us have no. a a stand there but they do let us sort of advertise and put things on their boards yeah um but in terms of donating things no we haven't explored that i think um it's an interesting concept i haven't thought about it i guess um with electricity or sort of other devices there's always a sort of safety um issue so i don't know um if there would be anything to consider kind of on on that end but yes mm -hmm. that's a very uh, interesting thought that i hadn't thought about at all i hadn't pursued yeah um public libraries as well i always think public libraries are a fantastic resource um yeah i think the disadvantage with public libraries is so many of the people that could benefit from them don't use them 
you know, if you're not familiar with the way a public library operates, it can be a bit scary for some people. Yeah. Um, but public libraries tend to have notice boards or a place where you can leave leaflets. Um, yeah, and of course, local radio. Um, yes. I've forgotten the name of the presenter on the Lancashire radio who does the weekend slots, but um, you could always contact the local radio station and say, please, will you speak to me? <laughs> so that I, can, I can present a little, you know, we could have a five minute chat about what the Green Rose and the Sustainability Hub are doing. Um, lots of people, including lots of people who, who are struggling financially do listen to the radio yes um, we have had uh, we have been in fact if you go to our facebook page you can see the link to our last radio interview right. um on bbc yeah. radio lancashire yeah, um so great. yes we do it's a great idea we do try and stay friends with um the radio uh, radio lancashire and also beyond radio who are yeah. kind of the local station in lancaster and morecambe yeah brilliant thank you i mean um I donate to the local food bank in my local supermarket regularly um, and it just never occurred to me to put in energy saving lines. Yeah. I yeah. put in tins of food, packets of food, you know, sanitary products for ladies, that yeah. kind of stuff, but never an energy saving light bulb. So I'm going to have a look at that and see. Yes, if I can do yeah. That. yeah, I think that's Thank a great you. idea. Thank you. Thank you. And I do actually have a question. So you mentioned the lack of digital literacy during mm -hmm. your talk. Can we do anything to address this as part of your activities? Yeah. So yes and no. We find um, that with many people, it's because either they're elderly or disabled and it isn't appropriate to say, well, you know, we could help, you know, you should do this, you should do that, we should help you, whatever. They've either decided it isn't something they want to do or it's something they've tried in the past and found that it's not accessible to them. And unfortunately, a lot of organisations have terrible accessibility. Um, even um, years ago, if anybody remembers the Green Homes Grant, um, one of the things that we did, we set up a helpline to help people with the Green Homes Grant because you could only apply online. And we actually helped people by literally printing things off the website or actually sitting beside people and helping them fill fill it in. Um, because, you know, there are many people who it's not so much there that they have poor digital digital literacy is that they have no access to uh, that digital way of life. They don't have smartphones. They don't have computers at home. Um, so we try rather than. Um, you know, try to kind of help people enter the digital age, we provide a way to uh, have for them to get access to those things um, through us, through help from us, rather than kind of send, sending them away with, a, you know, a, a sort of how to guide. However, we, within our energy champions training, we do talk about how to interact with your energy company, how to read your bills, um, if you're able to, you know, why it's better to register online, to update your meter readings online, etc. Why it might be prefer you know, preferable to get a smart meter so that you don't have to go down to your basement or go out to your shed or whatever to read the meter. So we do sort of try and balance it, I guess, for, for people. So to, to help them understand what might be useful and how to how to get at it. Um, but also a way to circumvent it if they're just struggling very badly and we can be the kind of conduit between them and either their energy company or a government agency or a, a grant funding regime or whatever it is. Excellent. Thank you for your uh, for your answer. So um, is there any other questions you'd like to ask Georgina? While you oh. have me. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thank you, Georgina, so much. This was so inspirational. Uh, I also work as a local councillor in Liverpool in, in Anfield, and uh, we had a kind of a, 
um, uh, energy cafes that we were setting up together with the community land trust. And they were always done in terms of like either at a food pantry or they were done at like, for example, at a school with a parents evening or in a community center and so on. But, you know, it, it never got to the point that we actually created. This is in Anfield in Everton in North Liverpool, uh, Sustainability Hub. So I wanted to ask you, and it's wonderful to, to hear uh, your journey, definitely. But I wanted to ask you, how does it feel uh, in terms of this difference of having pop-up spaces and then an actual place, which is called Sustainability Hub, which obviously gives it a focus on sustainability um, more firmly than if it was in the library or at the parents' evening and so on. Thank you. Thank you. That's a that's a really interesting question. Um, it, you know, I think, as I said before, it wasn't something we were really planning on and it wasn't something that I necessarily saw us leading on, because obviously at Green Rose, our focus is on the fuel poverty and on the households and the sort of uh, well-being aspect, as well as the sustainability aspect. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, what a nice marriage um, the way that we can bring people in to, uh, by offering them something that really is going to help them, uh, help them save on their bills or you know, help them understand their bills or help them when they're getting threatening letters or whatever it is, help them to stay warm. People who are, you know, um, so terrified uh, that they won't put the heating on at all or people who are struggling very much with damp or drafts or whatever it is to kind of give them a steer to make their homes actually warmer or to uh, give them a steer of where to get grants or whatever it is um and then you know we can also furnish them with the sustainability ideas and the sustainability options and i think we find as well when you bring people in um with the small things then they're more willing to consider the big things people will come in let's say to talk about their bills and then they'll be like oh we, we have a we, we don't have the big heat pump anymore because it wasn't um it was just taking up too much space and it wasn't movable because you needed four people to move it so we now have a cardboard cut out of the heat pump but it's still it gives people an idea of sort of what size it is what it looks like we have the um uh, solar panels, we have the EV charger. So it's a discussion point. So people who maybe ha haven't thought about those things, when they come in, maybe about something else, maybe just to come to our, um, uh, you know, our sorting party for Relic Plastic or our um, sustainable Christmas decoration making workshop, or they come to our Monday workshops to learn about how to read your bills or whatever it is. Um, they see those things and then they want to talk about them. And we found, especially with heat pumps, people just have absolutely no idea what they are. They don't know how they work. They think that you need to be in a hot country for them to work. There's all sorts of misconceptions out there. And it's so nice to be able to kind of chat to people um, in a, you know, in an honest and informative way about these things, um, especially because if you Google heat pump, the first hundred answers will be companies who sell heat pumps. The same if you Google, you know, uh, solar panels, the first hundred answers will be companies that sell solar panels. And then, you know, there'll be a few conspiracy theorists or what, you know what I mean? So it's just nice to have somewhere where people can come and talk about these things in a low pressure environment. And we certainly try to push our, our helpfulness before we push a kind of very strict environmental agenda or, or you know, climate change or net zero um agenda we're more trying to draw people in through the, the the ways we can help them and the ways that actually saving energy could make their life better and contribute to their well-being brilliant thank you is there any other questions any other final question you'd like to ask No, so it's. Um, I'm sure you have or can get access to my details. So if you have anything that you want to ask me, do feel free to email or give me a call or obviously pop into the hub. Absolutely. Oh, Chris. Hi there, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Let's turn my camera on. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Just want to say thank you very much indeed, uh, Georgina, for your, your brilliant um, presentation. Sorry I wasn't there for all of it, but uh, thank you all as well for coming along. And 
yeah, uh, please get in contact with Georgina. You can do that through myself if you like. I put my email in the um, chat box. Uh, I send a message out to Jamie as well, the York Climate uh, Hub. I'd like to get in contact with you, Jamie. Um, okay. So please email me. That'd be great. Um, and thank you, Marcello, as well, very much for hosting today's Lanks Can Sustain Net webinar. Uh, yeah, is there any other questions or points people would like to make? Marcello, do we have the, the next uh, webinar lined up yet for February? I believe that's so. still in process, isn't it? Yeah, I don't have my I, I don't have the details on this computer. I'm using another one because the other one is uh, not behaving as it should be talking about digital literacy, but <laughs> I'll, I'll, make yeah. it, I'll make it available. Yes. OK, yeah. Apologies for the link problem we had at the beginning. I know some of you couldn't join the, the webinar because of a, a link problem on the on the web pages. So. Yeah, apologies for that. Uh, yeah, so Marcello, do you have any final words? Or Georgina? No, I'd just like to say thank you. And I'll make the video uh, available uh, shortly. Great, thank you. Christopher, can I just say something, please? Um, yeah, sure. I, I don't seem to, I'm on my phone. I don't seem to be able to access the chat function. Can you just um, read out your email for me, please? Yeah, yeah, sure thing. Uh, it's dent so that's d d for denmark yeah. e n t yeah and then the c so dent c yeah okay at edge hill edge hill dot ac dot uk if you just google my name christopher dent okay. i think i'm still come top on google i think there's a cricketer called christopher dent who sometimes snaps top spot okay. <laughs> that's on the google search but you'll you'll find me there. And yeah. <laughs> Christopher Dent, coffee snob. You're you're bound to find me there if you if you do that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Excellent. So I'd like to th thank everyone for joining us. And of course, I'd like to thank Georgina. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye -bye. See Bye. you soon.